Um, I'm Julia Lieblich, and I'm a professor of journalism at Loyola University of Chicago, and I've written over the years about Guatemala. And um, 25 years ago, I talked to an editor at the New York Times to suggest an article about Guatemala, and he said to me, Guatemala is not on our map. So you can imagine how happy I was uh, a few weeks ago, a few days ago, when I woke up to the New York Times and saw Victoria Sanford piece on the conviction. And there have been so many other excellent articles. Um, um, an excellent website, the Open Society's Justice Initiative um, on the trial has been invaluable for many of us. And one of the things I read was that the Inter-American Commission for Human Rights noted that in 2009, Guatemala's impunity index for past and present crimes was 98%. Um, so how did this trial happen just a few years later? And I'd like to introduce our panelists. I'm very happy you're here. Uh, the first is, um, I'll, I'll make it quick so, so we can get right to the questions, but Susan Kemp, born in Scotland, attorney Susan Kemp has been working on human rights, litigation, uh, and war crimes since 1996. She lived and worked in Guatemala from 1998 until 2002 as legal counsel at the Center for Human Rights and Legal Action. She coordinated evidence for the launch of domestic criminal suits in 2000 against Presidents Lucas Garcia and Rios Mont in high commands. Ida Argueta is a scholar at the Giga Institute of Latin American Studies, specializing in private security policies and human rights as well as organized crime in Central America. From 2006 to 7, he was the technical secretary of the Advisory Council for, for the Security of the Guatemalan Government. And Edgar Alvarez. I, I begin. Hey, um, thank you very much for the invitation, um, for the organizers of this uh, very interesting uh, panel. I, to this question, I will refer first that this trial is the result of, uh, in my opinion, of multiple processes which initiated some years ago, starting with a um, process of strengthening of civil society organizations in Guatemala, spe especially those organizations focusing on uh, human rights. And this process is very important because it is not only related to the specific point of the trial, but for, for another, for a, for a a lot of processes very uh, uh, in Guatemala, political processes of uh, struggles uh, for land, for uh, 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 peace and organizations, human rights, and, and different topics. I think this is a mm, bigger processes, process that leads to this, um, to this trial and other processes in Guatemala. The second point is that, uh, starting with the peace agreements in Guatemala, there is a very important international cooperation support and in, in other uh, solidarity organizations in Guatemala. This is very important because this introduces uh, not only uh, financial resources, but also a political support, international political support for this process of, of strengthening of the civil society and human rights organizations in Guatemala. Part of this international support is, of course, the, the group of uh, scholars and activists, and activists in, in, in the international sphere, uh, foristic anthropologists, psychologists, historians, sociologists, in, in a, in a, in a mo very important group of scholars working on topics related to uh, human rights violations, uh, indigenous rights, human uh, in, in other topics. This is very important because this created some basis, argumentative basis for the work of, of uh, human rights defenders in Guatemala. Of course, there is an international context which helped to, uh, to strengthen these processes which occur in, in, in the Guatemalan context. But there is a third factor, for me very important, that lead to this very important trial. And is uh, some 
very specific institutional processes inside uh, uh, Guatemalan state. One of these processes is the strengthening of the prosecution, prosecution office, the Ministerio Público. This initiated around 2010 uh, with the election of Amilcar Velázquez Zárate. This is a very important point in this, uh, in this uh, some contemporary history of, of, uh, in, in Guatemala. Because it's the first time that a prosecutor was elected with a very important uh, accountability processes, observing, observing the election process. This was a, an, an antecedent. It was a, a very important starting point. And then, of course, the election of Claudia Pasipas, which uh, strengthened the processes of uh, strengthening of, of the, the public minister, uh, the prosecution office. Of course, part of this process is the, the, the role of CICIG. In my opinion, the support of the strengthening of the, of the prosecution office and the accountability processes on the judicial uh, branch is the most important result of CICIG. And, and this is, I think, very important to mention and to, to make some limits about the role of, of CICIG. For, for me, I, my opinion, this is very important to, 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 to mention. And part of this is the, the whole process is a process of gaining independ uh, judicial independence in Guatemala. And this is a very important process, very uh, long process in the future, and, and it's, it's, of course, one of the most uh, political uh, important process in Guatemala. I think these multiple uh, factors, from, in my opinion, is the, the, the most important processes that lead to, to this uh, trial. Thank you. Edgar? Eh, un momento, la, la pregunta. Ok. Sorry, no speak in English. Entonces. <laughs> eh, bueno, eh, a partir de las motivaciones. Ok, lo siento. Eh, los factores, digamos, alrededor de, de que fueron motivando un poco el impulso del caso y que se gara una sentencia después que fue. The factors that the factors that influence um, the emergence of the case and also uh, the conviction of Rios Montt. Eh, es un poco lo que plantea el compañero Otto Argueta, digamos, un proceso. ¿Se escucha? Bueno. Yes. Eh, un poco el proceso ahora sí sí eh, sobre el, el proceso de fortalecimiento de, de algunas instituciones de justicia digamos en el um, estoy de acuerdo con uh, I am I agree with uh, what Otto Argueta just said um, uh, uh, the strengthening of um, the uh, judicial uh, body in Guatemala has been crucial eh, como también a partir de, de los acuerdos de paz eh, se da no sé, bueno, eh, se da cierta apertura en el ámbito democrático y la participación social de, de las organizaciones after the peace agreements there has been an opening uh, for the democratic process and for the participation of civil organizations eh, más o menos eh, las las víctimas eh, consolidadas en la asociación en la asociación para la justicia y reconciliación en el año 98 99 se comienzan a, a organizar esto no se daba antes del año 96 en función de exigir eh, que se hiciera justicia eh, por los los hechos um, the victims organize around the asociación para la justicia y la reconciliación and uh, this kind of organization could not have existed uh, before the peace agreements. Y, eh, bueno, después ya surge toda esta parte eh, dentro del sistema de justicia, eh, la asociación se inscribe como, como asociación legal, digamos, eh, y después eh, se creía el caso sobre genocidio y va sobre el largo proceso eh, en el acceso a la justicia, digamos, pero es como las una pequeña apertura sobre la democracia y la consolidación y participación de las víctimas 
en su organización. So um, the association joined the um, trial against Rios Mont and uh, it, this has all signed an openness uh, for the participation of uh, civil organizations. Y eh, después, bueno, la, la otra parte que es como las mismas organizaciones eh, sociales a nivel guatemalteco, digamos, eh, alrededor de, de, de que hay alianzas estratégicas para seguir impulsando el, el trabajo, que eso es muy importante resaltarlo paralelamente al aparato de justicia que socialmente se consolida esa parte y que eso va dando los factores de seguir el proceso de, de, de llevar el caso sobre genocidio en tribunales. So the social organizations in Guatemala have also been establishing strategic alliances to uh, carry out the trial, but also to continue the process uh, after the trial for seeking justice. Bueno, yo eh, lo podría dejar ahí para ir compartiendo un poco entre los tres, un poco la, la experiencia de Guatemala, mm -hmm. conoces también Guatemala, entonces. Um, so I will finish there, I would like to uh, hear what uh, everybody else has to say. Let's see if this works. Um, I think, first of all, I'm really glad that Otto mentioned uh, CICIG and mentioned their role in trying to improve the independence of the Ministerio Público. Um, CICIG was created after a long period of lobbying by a group of Guatemalan civil society organizations. So although it's a, it was a UN national hybrid, it also came out of um, alliances at the national level and the pressure from civil society. Um, in terms of um, factors that are, that are many, I think maybe I would like to mention one which might also have some kind of international uh, reference point, and that would be the kind of uh, gap filling that civil society did in Guatemala during the period when the Ministerio Público did not have the capacity to investigate these crimes. Um, and the organization that Edgar is a member of was created in 2000 and together with the Center for Human Rights Legal Action, they carried out many of the things that the state should have been doing. And at the same time, the foundation of, anthrop of forensic anthropology were carrying out forensic ex excavations. Um, these are state services, so in the post-conflict situation, um, when people are searching for justice, what happened in Guatemala also happens in many other countries. Society will fill those gaps will represent victims, gather evidence, provide security even. Um, back in 1997, 98, um, Caldeachi got money from international donors to provide satellite phones, to provide uh, security for the evidence. Psychosocial experts like Nevis Tupui to accompany the process. Now over time, you hope that these diminish and that gradually the state does come in and start taking over its role. And what we're seeing now is exactly this kind of strengthening. Um, but the lesson would be that the international community should support civil society and should not pull out too soon, because it sometimes takes decades for the state institutions to get on their feet. And even afterwards, you still need a strong civil society to have oversight of these institutions. Thank you, Susan. Um, Adar, you're, you're particularly interested, you told me, in the opposition and in uh, links between the trial and conflict in Guatemala, and I'll throw in a, another part of the question because I don't know um, how we're doing in terms of time, but uh, you said you could also address in that what can be done to promote an independent judiciary. So I'll let all of you answer whatever piece of the question you want. Well, thank you very much. Yes, I'm... Uh, in None of this uh, debate about the trial, um, I am very interested in the question, why the opposition? And maybe it's more than a rhetoric question. I think it's very important to, for understanding the, the nature and the, and, the, and the complexity of the Guatemalan society. I'm coming directly from Guatemala, and it is very interesting to, to observe how this world of the political and ideological confrontation works. In it is not only important the trial, uh, but only how this opposition works. And, and I ask myself, okay, why the opposition? And, and the first point is to mention Rios Mont was not one of the uh, most important figures for uh, the entrepreneurial sector and for the militaries as well, including Otto Perez Molina. 
And also for the oligarchy, the traditional oligarchy of Guatemala, he was not one of the, of the most important representatives of these sectors. And then why the position? First, I would like to mention some ideas about the actors. We have the former militaries agglutinated in Ave Milgua, this uh, association, and the Foundation Against Terrorism, who are actively in, uh, impulsing uh, a very aggressive campaign of this create and disinformation uh, of the trial and the actors related to this trial. This is one dimension. Why these former militaries are interested in this in this and in this process? Well, maybe there is a um, a reaction against the possibility of being uh, of being uh, uh, judged by by these uh, these uh, institutions. And there is a, an, an ideological factor, of course. There is, there is also a, a, a number of former guerrilla uh, part, uh, members and some academics also participating in this campaign against the, the, the trial. Why? Well, maybe there is also a, a fear for, for being judged in, in Guatemala. And of course, the, the trial represents some kind of, of break in, in political structures in which these people participate and are, and are part of the, of the establishment. And, and then the, the third actor, CASIF, the entrepreneurials. Why, what, what is, what is the, the, the important point for, for CASIF to participate in this, in this campaign? I don't know how, how much time do I have. Not, not that much. OK. I just want to, 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 to bring the point of, of, the, of the, the opposition. I think the most important thing is to, to make a difference between the mechanisms through which this opposition works and the, and the, and the reasons. And uh, the idea is to, to mention the importance of the independence of the judiciary. This is a very important point in Guatemalan politics, not only in the, in the long tradition of patrimonial politics, corruption, impunity, and of course the, the system of domination. But just. Yeah, the idea of independence. Great. Susan, did you want to talk about lessons learned? Do you want to get into that? Maybe just um, Would you, like you mentioned that? in the judiciary. I think okay. it's important to remember, as Arya said, this judgment is a historical fact. Whether or not uh, legally it will survive it is a historical fact. It has impact um, in Guatemala and beyond. In terms of judicial independence and in terms of you know, the bad news that we see almost every day when we're following the case. We have to remember that we have an attorney general and a team of lawyers who back these victims. We have three judges, very, very qualified people, one with a doctorate, all with master's degrees, who day in, day out deal with complex criminal cases, money laundering, drug trafficking. They looked at all this evidence and they came to this conclusion. Um, in the Constitutional Court, you had two dissenting judges giving very, very strong dissents. Um, I think among the bad news, there are uh, seeds of hope there, um, and it, it really isn't uh, all a bleak, a bleak story. Before we take questions, to, to, do you want to respond to any of these? Okay. Sí. Eh, nuevamente, yo creo que los, los, do, eh, los dos compañeros que me antecedieron, digamos, eh, el aporte, y yo me voy a enfocar tal vez un poco. Eh, sobre la oposición al caso desde lo político e ideológico. Um, I agree with the two previous speakers. Now I want to focus on the opposition against the trial uh, um, regarding um, political and ideological aspects. Eh, bueno, yo le también a lo que estaría planteando el compañero Otto eh, le ag agregaría dos dos actores más que es I will add two more actors to the ones that uh, Otto already mentioned. La iglesia, la iglesia conservadora, la oligarquía, los militares y los familiares de los militares. Okay, the church, uh, the oligarchy, the military and the family of the military. Porque to, eh, a estos sectores eh, se tienen cierta vinculación y, a, y pa, apadrinaron todo lo que sucedió en Guatemala en los ochentas. Eh, en su momento This group sanctioned what happened in Guatemala in the 80s. negaron las masacres 
Ahora con lo que sucedió en Guatemala, o sea, el proceso sobre genocidio, aceptan las, el, lo que sucedió en la, la, las masacres y niegan el genocidio. Entonces, se da un paso cualitativo a esa parte. So in the 80s, uh, these groups deny the massacres, and nowadays these groups are accepting that there were massacres, but they are denying the fact that this should be considered a genocide. So there is like an improvement. Mm -hmm. Victoria. Sí, bueno, a mí me gustaría preguntar, eh, could I do the question in Spanish oh, please, and please, you translate please. me? Eh, ¿Qué pasó con los intelectuales mayas que fueron muy poco visibles en la, en, en la opinión pública? Me gustaría saber que, cuál es el posicionamiento de o cómo ven, eh, cómo reaccionaron ellos ante, ante el juicio, por ejemplo. So I, I would like to know uh, what happened with the Mayan intellectuals uh, during the trial because they didn't seem to have a very, um, they didn't seem to be very outstanding in public uh, opinion, so I want to know um, what are your thoughts about that, why is it that, that was the case? Edgar, if you want to say Okay. Eh, la verdad es que eh, sí hubo opinión, digamos. Eh, dentro de la, de, la, de la élite conservadora que mencionaba, este, son, la élite conservadora y los militares son los dueños de los medios de comunicación en Guatemala. Eh, hubo... Eh, so there was, um, there was an opinion, um, the, conservative, uh, the conservative elite and um, the oligarchy are the owners of the, um, of the media in Guatemala. Eh, entonces eh, se generó opinión de ellos con eh, algunos niveles de censura como lo que está sucediendo en la actualidad de la anulación del caso, un period el periódico de mayor circulación en el país no está, eh, durante más de una semana no mencionó nada sobre la anulación del juicio. So for example now that the trial has been um, annulated um, in the newspaper that has the biggest circulation at the national level did not mention anything during one week. Y también, eh, al, bueno, algo importante a resaltar es que eh, los espacios también son reducidos, o sea, de un 100% podríamos decir que se tiene un 5% de los espacios de opinión. Entonces, valorar esa parte de, de, de cómo se puede generar como oposición a favor es bien difícil. So the spaces to uh, voice an opinion are pretty limited. From 100% of the spaces, you may have 5% to uh, voice uh, dissident opinions. So, um. Any other question? Another question? Just as an acceleration, I am from La Ola, and not all the media in Guatemala are owned by the conservative or the ex-military. Um, sorry, Edgar, but. Uh, I can I can understand that most of the media can be under that umbrella, but in my case, it's unacceptable to to no, to listen that La Hora will be part of that. Sorry, just an declaration. Thank you. I would like to add exactly the point that there the part of the mechanisms of of the uh, opposition was to control the main and the most important mainstream uh, newspapers and television programs internet uh, web page and even for example i don't know how to say the mantas these are uh, uh, pancartas yeah. okay thank you uh, in Guatemala, it's amazing to see that in, in, in Guatemala to, which uh, sign is, um, which uh, text of uh, the heroic army, el ejército glorioso, uh, not all Guatemalans are genocides, for example. It, it was a very aggressive campaign. And of course, uh, or other intellectuals and organization, uh, organizations had to look for alternative uh, um, uh, means uh, of uh, media, media, media opportunities. And there are some, some kind, but not maybe not with the projection of international uh, echo. Could 
Maybe I just sure, sure, please. The, the coverage that we saw on a daily basis in the national press would have been unthinkable 15 years ago or when the case was started. This was on television, radio, and newspapers every day. You had the symbolism of the former chief of uh, the army and head of state in the dock. And I think that we can't underestimate the power of that, even if those spaces are not being taken advantage of um, by those who suffered. Um, I think Ari and Ayer reminded me of Benedicto Lucas when he was talking about Michael Rose, saying that people had done this to themselves. Benedicto Lucas, 15, 16 years ago, said these uh, clandestine cemeteries, that was caused by the earthquake in 76. You know, nowadays, that just wouldn't wash. And I think people who are trying to deny the genocide are having to come up with different types of arguments, uh, legalistic arguments and uh, national pride, etc. So they're grasping at straws much more than they used to. Thank you. Victoria? Uh, I did. Oh, thank you. Great. Um, I was wondering, Otto, if you could talk about what kinds of historical connections you can see between the different groups in the military responsible for the genocide and private security companies and clandestine groups that exist today. Well, thank you very much for the question. I think there, there, there is a link, but very complex link, because not understanding why this kind of trials is very important in the context of conflicts in Guatemala. I make always the example of the mining explorations in Guatemala. What is the connection? Um, my argument is that all businesses in Guatemala needs to have a strong control of the judiciary to uh, guarantee not only impunity, but also the legal framework of business in Guatemala. And the army has been historically the, 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 the defenders of this status quo and this social order in Guatemala. But now, trials like this is like a, a, a warning to the army and other political uh, politicians to make some um, caution about what I am doing with the state. It's like an alert. OK, the judiciary has some levels of independence. And now, so like the, the Judge Barrio said, if you, the idea is if you are in the state, you are responsible for your acts. And of course, you, you have to, 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 um, to, to have this responsibility, legal responsibility. OK, but now, with an army that, uh, that, that can be judge uh, in, the, in, in a trial, what is the option? What is the alternative for the entrepreneurial, the oligarchy, and, and, and so on? Are the private security sector. We, we saw this in Guatemala right now in, 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 the, uh, in, the, um, in, in Chiquimula and in this part of the country with uh, private security companies addressing social protest. Why? Because private security companies cannot be a uh, trial and, and there is no accountability regulation for this for this uh, sector, not only the national private security sector, but also the international private security companies. This is the new alternative. Private security is the, the option for, a, for an army that can be a, a trial, can, an army that has to be more careful with their acts. What is the option for the, for the oligarchy and the, and the entrepreneurial sector? Private security. This is another this is other dimension of the problem. Of course, this process represents an opportunity to open the, the, the possibility to trial these different sectors, not only militaries, but also entrepreneurs, uh, private security owners, and so on. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any more questions? We have time for maybe one. Yes. Uh, Going back to speaking about the media in Guatemala, um, I was curious. I also really want to believe that even if this case continues to be annulled and doesn't doesn't move back forward, that it's it's sort of opened up Pandora's box and we've we've moved forward nonetheless. But I'm wondering how it's seen in Guatemalan general opinion, whether the incredible um, campaigns of of defamation and slander against the international community and against the civil society in Guatemala have been successful, um, or that most Guatemalans sort of have been swayed by the evidence that was presented within the trial, despite the fact that that evidence especially was almost not covered at all within the major newspapers in the country. Uh, 
anyone, okay. este, bueno, la opinión pública habría que, que valorarlo en la ciudad, el campo, digamos. Eh, los medios de comunicación influyeron mucho en la duda. Well, sí. Regarding public opinion, there is a difference between uh, the urban areas and the rural areas, and the media influence a lot the opinion, yeah. Eh, en las áreas eh, rurales, digamos, como fueron las que vivieron eh, las atrocidades en la guerra, revivieron ese sentimiento de búsqueda de la justicia, entonces hay como eh, contrapesos eh, en la opinión pública. So, in the rural areas, uh, this was the places where the atrocities were committed, so the people there revived the uh, experience and they serve as a counterbalance uh, for the public opinion in general. Sí, y bueno, lo, lo que habría que resaltar también es como lo, lo que se abordaba hace un momento sobre las formas eh, de, en este caso, la Fundación contra el Terrorismo, de cómo maneja eh, como las formas de la comunicación, porque tiene el dinero para poder accesar e influir el miedo. Entonces, es, es, es difícil determinar qué. Eh, por dónde va la, la, la opinión, porque hay una cultura de miedo por las amenazas. Entonces, pero si hay una, una eh, hay sectores que están a favor, hay sectores que no están eh, a favor, entonces habría realmente sería necesario hacer un, un equilibrio, un estudio para saber cuál es realmente la, la, eh, el equilibrio ahí o eh, los porcentajes de la opinión pública sobre el caso, Mu, pero mucho. It's different, it's difficult to make a balance to know um, there are many people in favor and people against, I guess, the, the trial and the conviction of Rios Montt, and, and it's uh, difficult to measure, so it will be necessary to make a, some sort of a, a polling to figure out, but it's important to know the role that the association against, uh, the foundation against terrorism has played, because they have instilled fear among the population. So. Thank you very much. Can I add oh, some sure. very short point? I agree with uh, what uh, Edgar said, and I think it's very difficult to, to, to measure what is the, the opinion. For me, one of the most important things when I, when I was in, in Guatemala it was to see uh, young people participating in the support to, 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 to social organ uh, so civil society organization and human rights defenders. It's very important. But it, it, is, it is clear that it is the support comes from the the the, the, the small groups of young uh, young people and organizations in the city. Guatemala is a country with a lack of uh, an educational system that integrates uh, history in the in the in the program of education. The school in, in Guatemala history ends in 1944, and then I don't know. Maybe uh, there are some in, some 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 uh, efforts to introduce these topics in, in the educational system, but it's a lack of of uh, of, of um, knowledge about the history. And the other point is that in this uh, elite d debate of of, uh, of the of the trial, the most evident point that emerged with a very strong force is racism. Racism, what I'm saying. It's amazing to observe how um, middle class, uh, of course, uh, in, in other, in other uh, parts of the society, is an aggressive attitude uh, from the racism. Racism emerged as a, as a force in Guatemala to deny genocide, to say, uh, I, I heard and I, and I read some, some uh, arguments saying that the, 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 um, the culpa, the, um, the guilt, the, uh, the guilt was where the Spaniards, the Spanish, because, because they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, exterminate all Indians in Guatemala. Some extremes. I think it's, it is amazing how racism emerged with this kind of, of, of uh, uh, debate in Guatemala. And this is, I think, very important to mention maybe for the uh, next panelists. Susan, do you want to add anything from? Okay. <laughs> Thank you.